Hey, 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 it's Adele from Let's Get Inky. And today I'm working on a page that has been challenging me for a little while because it's half craft, half white paper, and I'm not a craft person. So I, di I was a little apprehensive when starting this. I didn't exactly know what I was going to do, um, but in the end, I love what came out of the creative process that I kind of just grab a lot of the time. I'll either have like one particular stencil in mind or uh, like a color that I want to use, but that's pretty much it when I start an art journal page. I'm using some Liquitex white gesso and I gessoed the left hand side of the page and I overlapped it a little bit on the right hand side. You saw at the start there uh, I was using some washi tape because I had cut out a page from this journal to make it a bit thinner and so I had uh, like a, a flappy bit from the previous page still hanging around. I couldn't quite cut it all the way to the spine because I might snip the spine apart and that would be disastrous. So I'm grabbing some of my Dilutions paints in a few different colors, the, the blues and the pinks and the purples. And I've decided to use this beautiful Prima uh, stencil, which I think I've only used once or twice beforehand. Uh, looking back, I wish I had used texture paste with it and not paint because it is a thin stencil. It's quite difficult to sponge paint through. So top tip, if you have this stencil, texture paste is a lot easier to use with it than pen, uh, sponging with uh, paint and a sponge. I wanted a kind of like a an ombre-ish type look on this side and I'm just overlapping the paint slightly onto the right hand side and I'm just doing these big bold stripes. I've been loving using stripes in my backgrounds lately. Uh, I know a lot of the process videos that I've filmed recently have had these big stripes either going horizontal or vertical and it's a really easy technique to replicate in your own art journals uh, because you can do whatever color scheme you like whatever color family and you can make them thick or thin whatever floats your boat but it's a really easy way to add a lot of color to your background and while also giving it a little bit of interest rather than just having a, a solid color. So I'm just going through and using a nice wide paintbrush. I I don't buy expensive paintbrushes generally. Uh, I I have maybe one or two that were that I bought individually, uh, but most of the time I just buy them in packets that I can get from my local craft shops. I love this midnight blue. It's one of my favourite colours of paint. And using a thick paintbrush is very handy when you're making backgrounds for your art journal pages. If you're finding that your art journal backgrounds are a little bit streaky, um, try changing it up and using a wider paintbrush. It can be very, very fun. Even if you feel like what you're painting is a little bit more detailed, just, just try with a big paintbrush. I'm also a fan of using giant scissors to fussy cut. So I think I just, I don't like teeny tiny detailed tools. Now I'm grabbing this stencil. I don't know the brand, sorry. And I'm just using a makeup sponge and that I got from a cheap shop. They make excellent tools in my art journaling supplies. And I'm just using some of the different uh, colors of paints and kind of doing a, a tone on tone look. I'm trying to make it ombre-ish, uh, not completely ombre, but ombre-ish. And I'm doing a darker tone on top of the background tone of each of these. I made a purpley color because I didn't really have a purple. So I'm just mixing some of the, the dark blue and the funky fuchsia together. And I'm just, I sped this bit up a little bit because it did take me quite a while to sponge all of this paint through the stencil. I love using, I'm using a Heidi Swap, uh, I wonder what she calls them, craft mat maybe, underneath. And it's really handy because you can just wipe everything off with a wet paper towel or baby wipe afterwards. I'm just continuing to sponge all that through. And at this point, I wasn't sure if I wanted to have the stars uh, go across to the other side of the page as well. I knew I was going to have the girl somewhere on that side of the page, but I, if you're ever unsure of something like that, it's best to just do 
the piece that you feel most confident about or that you like the most first and then pull the stencil off see if you actually really like it and if you want to continue on the other side so there is the great reveal and it turns out I did like it but I only wanted to do a little bit of the stars on the right hand side so I'm just going through and picking some I'm picking specifically what stars I want to include keeping in mind whereabouts the girl will be over here uh, she does end up with a slight star moustache but um, I made it work it's kind of like she has a a star kiss I guess rather than a moustache but it does look a bit moustachey but that's okay we're just going with the flow just once again trying to make that purpley kind of tone to go over those middle colors this is a great technique for creating backgrounds uh, you could just simply stick a like a focal image over the top of this or do some brush lettering over the top which I do do in a little while uh, but it's just a, a really easy technique if you're starting mixed media or if you've ever lose your mojo it's um, it's a technique that really can change can, um, depending on what colors you use or what stencil you use as well. So you can see her little star moustache there. <laughs> oh, and I just go with the flow. Um, so like I said, this was really difficult to make the paint actually go through the teeny tiny stencil lines. It was really difficult. If I did it again, I would definitely mix some black paint with my texture paste instead. Uh, there's my giant head with my bed hair because I'm pretty sure I did this early in the morning during Archie's first nap of the day. I moved the stencil several times accidentally, which was a big pain. And I guess, so you can see here, I guess the good thing is with this stencil is that as long as you keep if you ever move a stencil like this line up the bit that's the most obvious if it's wrong so for me it was definitely her her profile her nose and her chin and her lips I needed those to be in the right spot so that she didn't end up with like five noses or five chins accidentally uh, and then luckily the hair is very wispy and there's lots of just swirly lines and so I was able to and get away with having a, a not as crisp and neat stenciling as I usually do. I'm using the black paint because of the craft. I feel like I think that's one of the reasons why I struggle with craft because and craft, if you're new to art journaling or paper crafts, um, craft is the name of this brown color. That's what it's called craft with a K. Uh, and I struggle with it, I think, because colors don't look the same on it as they do on normal white paper and so I'm a very colorful kind of art journaler and I it annoys me that I have to put white gesso or something down first for the colors to look as vibrant as they usually do on normal white um, art journal paper so here I sped this bit up considerably. My hand unfortunately is not this quick at tracing, uh, but I just used a food ball pen, which is not permanent. So keep that in mind if you're using this pen. And I'm just really roughly tracing the outside of these stars. In a way, I wish I had only selected a few stars to do because it made my brush lettering not pop as much um, but I still love the the look that it gives I was considering outlining them with white and I do go back and uh, in a little while and outline some of them with white but I choose to do my brush lettering in white instead so I'm just doodling those around and you can see when you're looking at the girl stencil she looks fab she looks very pretty um, in black but it's not until you add white to this page that the whole thing really comes to life and I've said this before in previous videos but if you're new to art journaling I highly recommend investing in a black paint pen a black gel pen a white paint pen and a white gel pen because they're four of my most used tools uh, definitely they've there I use I go through them quite quickly and they can really change a page just by adding a little bit of white um, it can really make things pop 
I decided to not outline the stars that are behind her hair. I just didn't want it to get too uh, busy. And here I am, I'm using a sharper, sharper, sharpie extra fine point white paint pen, which I'm a bit devo because I had, dev, sorry, devo is Australian for devastated. Uh, I'm a bit devo because I went onto a website to buy some and found that they are discontinued. So if there are any Aussie peeps that know where I can get the extra fine point of the sharpie paint pens, please pass it on because I need to buy some. Uh, this one, as you will see, sadly died halfway through and I had to, I had, I had words with it uh, and it, it still, yeah, it took forever to work. And so I didn't film the last word of this quote and I managed to get it working enough to finish off this quote, but I'm not liking its chances of uh, my next project of it agreeing with me in working. That sentence didn't make sense, but we're going with it. I'm too far into the voiceover to start things again. So we're, we're just rolling with it. I'm using the extra fine because I like it because it can give me the fine skinny lines of my upstrokes, but then I can go back and thicken the down strokes of my brush lettering. And you can see here, this is when the pen starts to go, mm, I'm not sure I want to work for you anymore. And things are getting lighter and a little grayer than usual. Uh, and I do go off and have a, have a bit of a hissy fit off camera in a moment with the paint pen. <laughs> um, but I, I really enjoyed I enjoyed a lot of things about this journal and currently when I'm recording this voiceover I have two double pages and one single page to go. I've been powering through and trying to trying to finish this art journal because um, my beautiful friend sent me a Jane Davenport journal in the A5 size. This is the Dina Wakely Media Journal in the small size. Uh, I But I told myself that I I already, I realize I have, I think I have nine art journals on the go at the moment. Mm, at least seven, but I think I counted them and it's actually nine, which is ridiculous. Some of them only have a couple of pages. So I've done a class with someone and we got an art journal as part of the class and we worked in it. Uh, others are halfway done some are a quarter some, oh, it's just bad so I'm really trying to use up uh, as much as I can and I told myself I couldn't use my Jane Davenport one until I finished this one I did break my promise and just did one page or two pages with a couple of my um, highest tier Patreon peeps we did a video chat and we made um, an art journal page that required two blank pages, one after each other. So I couldn't do it in this journal anyway, even if I wanted to. <laughs> That's my excuse anyway. <laughs> so you can see by adding that white to the stencil, it just makes it pop. And it honestly is my favorite part of the whole uh, layout, those white outlines on, on the girl. And then using a uni chalk texter, uh, marker, whatever you may call them, and I'm using that to do my white splatters because I like how opaque they are. And I have a whole heap of these half used chalk textures lying around because the tips of them are no good anymore. Um, I've said in previous videos, I used to do custom blackboards and so the tips of them are fuzzy and gray and no good, but there's still lovely, delicious white chalk ink inside them. So this page is all fin finished and I, you know what, even, even with her star moustache, I love this girl. Um, I found this quote on Pinterest and I thought it was quite nice because all of these stars are very bright colored and I love the way it looked. I'm not going to convert to a craft lover but I will tolerate it I, in small doses. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye.